Hi, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of Focal Point and AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Going to have to uh, sue the president, maybe, for copyright infringement. Heard in that uh, teaser that Jeff Reed pulled together for the top of the program that Jay Leno was calling him the Silver Fox because his gray hair is caused by the Fox News Network. It's kind of funny, but hey, that's my moniker. He can't take that. You know, we had uh, our meeting this morning with the entire AFA staff and our general counsel, Pat Vaughn, was saying, hey, look, if you got any name that needs to be trademark protected, I'm in the process of making sure we're all squared away on that. So we got copyrights and trademark protections on all our name, and I forgot to ask him to protect the name The Silver Fox. So that's something we're going to have to get to right after the program. And I thank Jeff, my eagle-eyed producer, for making me aware of this potential devastating problem for Focal Point. Now, before we get into all the stuff about what's going on with our embassies overseas, the latest on the health care debacle, President Obama's appearance on Jay Leno last night, this interesting development over in Russia. This is a fascinating thing to me to watch what's going on with the dynamics here where Russia is hosting the Winter Olympics and yet they have just passed a policy that prohibits any propagandizing of uh, homosexuality. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, all of that plays out, how that story uh, begins to uh, unfold. So we'll get into all that as the program proceeds. I want to begin by, as we customarily do, by reading a passage of Scripture, making some comments as we go, and then spending time praying. Again, I think this is the most important thing that we do is to pray for ourselves and pray for our nation. This is a prayer for a revival. You know, I cast a wide net in, in the prayer, and I hope that you will be praying with me for your family as I pray for mine, pray for our president, for our country, for everybody that lives in the country. We are praying for God to do a massive spiritual awakening in response to our prayers. That's why I cast as wide a net as it possibly can, start narrow and expand. So we are asking God to work in our entire nation, our entire society as a people. Now, in James chapter 4, James begins, you know, he, he says, look, people don't get along. People get into conflicts all the time. They have fights. They have arguments. And he explains why. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you. Uh, your pleasures are at war within you. So he says, really, the problem with quarrels, it comes down to it, the problem is in us. It's not with other people. The problem is within us. So if two people are in an, in an argument, in a quarrel, then both of them have to ask the question, what, core, what, what pleasures are at work in waging war inside me? Within my body, in my members, literally, what impulses, what drives are at war inside me that is producing this conflict with another person? That's not to say that in every circumstance, both parties are equally at fault. I'm not saying that because it's just simply not true. Sometimes one person can bear 100% of the blames. Sometimes it's 80-20. Sometimes it's 50-50. The point is... James says, look, if you're in a quarrel, you've got to stop and ask yourself a question about the pleasures that are competing inside you, what you might be contributing uh, to this quarrel. You desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet, that's an internal pleasure. There's something that you want and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Now, I'm not sure exactly what James is referring to here. It can be interpreted one of two ways, talking about asking people for things or asking God for things. And I, I think he's probably primarily talking about people, because that's been the whole context is our interactions with people. So he could be saying you don't have because you do not ask. Uh, you're, you're, you may be, there may be something that you need or something that you desire, something that you want, and it's perfectly appropriate to ask for it, and you never ask for it, and then you're resentful when you don't get it. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons you don't have what you're looking for is you simply don't uh, ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. In other words, you do ask, but you ask in a way that's designed to manipulate the other person, that's designed to maneuver them to get what you want, and they resist that. People don't like to be manipulated. Uh, an honest request, that's one thing, but if they feel they're being worked, 
Now, anybody is going to resent that, and so they may withhold what the other mice might be willing to give. And so James says, this makes you an adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? In other words, if we allow our own pleasures and passions to drive us in our relationship with other people, that's what the world does. That's not God's pattern. That's not God's plan for us. And so if we behave that way, if we find ourselves constantly in conflict with other people, always having quarrels with them, always having disagreements with them, then Paul says that makes you an adulterer. You have become a friend of the world rather than a friend of God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world, that is constantly involved in conflicts with other people, constantly involved in quarrels and arguments and contention, if, if you wish to be a friend of the world by acting in that way, you are making yourself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the Scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? He is jealous for us. He does not want us to belong to anyone else. He does not want our affections and our loyalty to go to the world instead of to him, and therefore he becomes our enemy. He's not going to let that happen because he is jealous for us. He wants us all to himself. It's a godly jealousy. It's a right jealousy. And therefore, James says, God opposes the proud because pride is friendship with the world. It separates us from God. God is going to fight us if there is pride in us because he jealously longs for us. He wants us to belong to him completely, and our pride, our ego, gets in the way of that. Therefore, he opposes the proud. He becomes our enemy. Uh, yet, James says, he gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. A great promise there. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, a lot of times the temptation that comes against us comes when we're alone, and what we discover, if we resist, if we put up a fight, in Jesus' name, it's not long before that temptation is gone. It's left. You submit to God, resist the devil, and the promise of Scripture is he will flee from us. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your mercy and your grace this day for me, for my family, for the listening audience of Focal Point and AFR Talk, for President Obama and all of our elected officials, for every man, woman, and child in the United States. I pray that you will help us to overcome the desires that battle within us and that lead us into fights and quarrels with others. Free us from coveting things that we want but cannot have. Prompt us to ask you for what we need and purify our motives so that we do not spend what we get from you on our pleasures. I thank you that the spirit you have caused to live in us longs jealously for us. May we reject an adulterous friendship with the world so that we may not become your enemy. Instead, may we submit ourselves to you. We know that you oppose the proud and yet give grace to the humble. So I pray that we will humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Strengthen us so that we will resist the devil. We claim your promise that when we do, he will flee from us. Draw us near to you that you in turn may draw near to us. May we wash our hands of all sin and purify our hearts of all double-mindedness. May we grieve and mourn over our sin, humble ourselves before you so that you may lift us up. Amen. I know many of you